San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production, starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars, Pamela Franklin. Special guest star, Celeste Holmes. Tonight's episode, Crossfire. Anybody who can read a newspaper has got to be tense. I don't know. I remember when I was at Berkeley. Oh, yeah, that's right. You were there during the riots, weren't you? Yeah. Those are rough times. But I remember there could be a major confrontation going on just 100 yards away. There'd be couples sitting on the grass like nothing in the world was wrong. Well, like they say, the beat goes on. Yeah. Let's just hope those shots last week were the end of it. Yeah, I do, too. Well, we'll hang in there till 9 o'clock and then get another unit to relieve us. Topsy to be sure. You think it was the same guy out there today that took the shots last week? Oh, no, don't get the ballistics report. And no trace of him? Nope, not yet. That's the wife. 
Which one? The taller one. The other's her sister-in-law. Rough on both of them. But at least she wasn't alone. You want to talk to her now? No, no, no. Let's give her a while. Hard to take, isn't it? Coop with a gun. He brings down a man like David Shanninger. Did you know him? I know his books. That's where I know the name. Sure, David Shanninger. That's right. Don't let the titles turn you off. His work was solid. My psych professor in med school said Shanninger was one of a half dozen at the top. Well, I'll get the autopsy report to you as soon as we have it. Okay, Doc. Thanks a lot. Man. Thanks, Doc. Lieutenant, Inspector. Hey, what goes with these titles that he was talking about? You ever read the Times book review? We got good newspapers in San Francisco. What do I have to read book I'm review not from not back in It's my city, too. It's just the Times did a big spread on Shanninger just a couple of weeks ago. Okay, okay. The answer to your question is no. Now, will you answer mine? He had at least two bestsellers. It must have made a lot of money. But you can't remember the titles. Remember the title of the last book? Yeah, it was called Sex. Oh, that's very good. Very inventive. Well, that's some long, erudite subtitle, like uh, Psychologist's View of Its Role in Society Today. Something like that. I don't know. But it's just listed as sex. That's right, sex. I think I'll wait for the movie. Okay. He was a professor at the university, eh? Part-time, yeah. He also had his own private practice. And he must have had a lot of dough stacked away. You don't buy houses on Valeria Drive with GI loans. So one of us better talk to Shannon's wife, and the other one better talk to that girl and see what she has to tell us. Which one would you like? You give me a choice. <laughs> after you. No, 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 no. A after you. <laughs> through it's urgent all right um would you please have him call 555-3417 yeah he'll know who it is and would you please tell him that i'll be there in about half an hour okay thank you hi hi how are you feeling well i'll never be able to defend my arm wrestling championship but i'm fine good do you mind if we talked a little bit sure I, I don't know what i can tell you well coffee yeah thank you where were you coming from this morning? The library. You were going? Home. Home. How do you like it? Oh, Black's fine, thanks. Did you see anything unusual when you were crossing campus? No. I guess I know how it feels to be struck by lightning, though. I mean, I was walking along, and the next thing I knew was on the ground. <laughs> Miss Dunnigan, can you think... Excuse me, Miss Dunnigan, is that right? Peggy. Peggy, thank you. Can you think back over the last uh, couple of weeks? Have you had a run-in with anybody? I don't know what you mean. Well, we gotta assume the guy just snapped, but it's possible he might have seen you around campus. Maybe he even knew you. Some guy who dug you, you didn't like him, something like that. No, no, there's nothing. Did anyone see him? Nope, all we know is he moved pretty fast to get to Everly Street in time. In time for what? I'm sorry, I thought you knew. After he hit you, he went down to Everly Street and killed the Professor Shanninger. Well, you know him? No, uh... Well, by, by reputation, I mean, everyone on campus did. You sure he's dead? Yes. It still seems so unreal. Bear had just come down from Seattle and... We'd taken a ride up to Muir Woods. She'd never seen them. And when we came home, we found the police car waiting. I knew something terrible had happened. Mrs. Shanninger, can you tell me, was there anything, anything unusual in the daily routine of your husband's life recently? I'm not sure I know what you mean. I think I do. How can you think this is anything but a maniac on the loose, Lieutenant? Well, that's exactly what we think it is, but, uh, well, we have to check out all the possibilities, you know. David didn't have any enemies. He didn't have any problem with his patients? Unusual mail, telephone calls, anything at all? I don't think so. 
You're welcome to go through his mail. He had a telephone answering service, of course. I'm sure that all of his calls would be recorded there. Uh, it was the PROCOM exchange. PROCOM. Well, thank you for your uh, cooperation, and I know how difficult it must be for you at this time. I'll do anything I can. Thank you. Goodbye. Could you get back to me as soon as possible, please? That's right. Right, Inspector Keller. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye. How's the girl? She's okay. You get her story? Yeah, yeah, just a co-ed across on campus. Her name's Peggy Dunnigan, 20, no parents. She couldn't come up with any reason for being singled out of the crowd. Well, that's her story. What's yours? Well, I don't know. I thought I picked up on something, but I'd have to know her better to be sure. You hold it right there. Now, you do your getting acquainted routines on your own time. Come on, will you? What's the reaction? Well, when I mentioned Shanager, she seemed to take it awfully hard. Well, you said he was a celebrity on the campus, didn't you? Right. That's probably all it was. Okay, you called in about that ProCom exchange? Yeah, I did. I talked to them. Here's a list of Shanager's phone calls for the last two weeks. Anything interesting? Don't know yet. Looks like mostly routine business calls from patients. Check them out. I'm working on it. Odds are we're spinning wheels. You can't hit it big by playing the odds, buddy boy. Well, you can waste a lot of energy and time bucking them, Mike. I've got the time, you've got the energy. <laughs> okay, Guru, okay. Since you've obviously taken some time to work up a case for premeditation, will you answer me the big one? If this guy killed Shanager for a reason, right? Why does he run the risk of shooting at an innocent girl first? You... you know something I don't know, don't you, huh? <laughs> the ballistics report? Same gun, both hits. Same as the casings you found? Yeah, military weapon, M16 type. Homicide, Inspector Keller. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, please, will you? Yeah, could you give it to me now, please? Right. I see. Okay, well, thank you very much. Goodbye. See, so what's this entry? 555-3417, just a number. Yeah, I had the uh, telephone company checking it. That was the call. Oh, you got it? It's an unlisted number in the new Coronet apartment building for David Shanager. Does wife tell you anything about him having an apartment in town? No. Well, someone was at Shanager's apartment and wanted him to call there. Say, so maybe you just saved us a lot of legwork, buddy boy. Get on that phone. I'll take the extension. Excuse me, I think I may have the wrong number. To whom am I speaking? Who do you want? Peggy Dunnigan? This is she. Miss Donegan? I started to run. I got all the way to the elevator. Did you see Professor Shaniger today? No. Peggy, how long have you known him? About a year. There was a meet the professor coffee hour at the Union. And I met him. Did you know he was married? Yes. But it didn't matter. Even his age was attractive to me, or maybe especially his age. Well, then... What you're saying is that uh, this was a sort of um, father-daughter relationship. No. I just meant that I think I needed maturity, and I know that David needed youth. This place was for him. It wasn't anything I cared about. I used to live at the Wildbrook Center, but David didn't like the swinging singles atmosphere, so he leased this. He loved the view. 
He used to say if he had to choose between a view and a nice building, he'd be quite happy to live in a plastic bag. But you didn't care for it. What was it that you did care for? An education. Some girls get jewels, furs, cars. David was putting me through college. It isn't well, as sordid as it sounds, not really. I mean, I loved him. Or at least I thought I did for a while. You didn't pack all these boxes today, did you? No, we broke up three days ago. Well, why was that? Oh, I'm getting married. To somebody else? Well, now, uh, Miss Dunnigan, um, <laughs> excuse me, but um, I know that uh, young people look at things a little differently from when I was your age. It's all right. I know how it sounds. It sounds that way to me, too. But it isn't. It's just... Peggy, sit down for a second, will you? You know, we're not here uh, judging you. We're trying to get a sniper. Well, the shooting couldn't have anything to do with it. It couldn't. It was just a freaky coincidence. Well, then tell us, why did you break up with Shanager now? I used to date someone who went overseas and uh, seemed to end when he went away. Then when he got back from Hanoi, I, he wrote me and I wrote him and eventually I went down to San Diego to see him. And suddenly my relationship with David seemed all wrong. So... Hanoi? He was a POW? Yes. Well, there's no reason for him to find out about this, is there? I mean, I don't want him to know now, not after what he's been through. No, it's not necessary. I'm just going to need his name, though. Alan Melder. His address? The Naval Hospital, Balboa Park, at San Diego. He's a captain in the Marine Corps. Okay, thank you very much. Marine captain and an M-16, huh? You know, there is a possibility it was just a wild coincidence. I mean, both of them getting picked off like that. Would you believe that if you read it in one of those Times book reviews of yours? No. No, of course not. Tell you what, you take the car, you talk to Shanniger's wife again. I'll go back to headquarters and see what I can dig up on Melder. Hey, easy! Right. Oh, swing by Tony's on the way back. Tony's, no, Mike, come, oh, come on. on no, come on, come on. They should pay you. Bryant Street. Uh, Don't forget Tony's. How dare you come here making accusations like that? Mr. Shanager, I'm not making accusations. I'm only trying to fill in the gaps. By telling me my husband was keeping another woman? I only said he was paying the rent on an apartment, that's all. Gall! Trying to tie him to that Wildbrook crowd? Making scurrilous insinuations? I'm not insinuating anything, ma'am. I'm only trying to find... I don't know how much more I can take. I mean, isn't it enough that my husband was gunned down in cold blood because our streets aren't safe without your coming here to insult his memory? I'm only saying new facts have turned up. That's all. Facts, Inspector, or obscene rumors? Look, I don't like asking these questions any more than you like answering them, Mrs. Shanninger, but I need to know how much you were aware of. She's already said none of it. Then you do not know Peggy Dunnigan. I've never even heard the name. Inspector, if my husband was unfaithful to me, he must have taken great care to protect my feelings and to make sure that I never suspected anything. And that's what I'm going to try to remember from now on, not the painful implications you've just told me. Thank you. That's right, M-E-L-D-E-R. Uh huh, Marine Captain. I see. No, no, this is just a routine investigation. Yeah, I may want to see him. That's right. How's that again? No, I, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Where? What time? Uh huh. What about last week? I see. Well, thank you for your cooperation, Sergeant. Mm, yeah. 
Yes, I'll get in touch with you if I need any more information. Yes, goodbye. Hurry, hurry. Tony's fine as ghetto while it's still cold and soggy. A guy comes home after 18 months in a POW camp, gets engaged, and then finds out that his girl has been kept by another man. How does that hit you? Melder? Peggy said he didn't know. Yeah. What, no anchovies? No. Why not? Because I don't like anchovies. We always get anchovies. No. You always get anchovies. I never get anchovies. I hate anchovies. <laughs> boy, oh boy, she must have given you a rough time. Or was it the sister? No, they were all right. I guess the questions were kind of rough. Got about as much appetite for them as I have for this. Well, here. You feed your eyes on this. <sighs> Melda was on leave? Mm-hmm. Due back tonight. You want to guess where he's been? Here? Mm-hmm. Since last night. You want to guess where you're going? There. Two for two. You're batting pretty good. All right, he could have been on campus this morning, but what about last week? They're checking that out. What about a service record? Anything about weapons training? Did you ever hear of a Marine who made captain who couldn't handle a rifle? Area in about, uh, yeah, but I've been down this area in about, oh, I don't know, three years, four years. Where do I go now? Right there? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Bye. Captain Melder? Yeah. Stephen Keller. Here, uh, grab a bench. I understand you're getting out of here soon. Yeah, it's close enough. I'm, uh, I'm beginning to count the hours now. I have to admit, uh, I'm curious. You know Peggy Dunnigan? Yes, yeah, she's my fiance. You talked to her in the last 24 hours? No. Oh, why? What's the matter? Nothing's the matter now. She's all right. But there was a shooting on campus. Peggy was hit. She was hit. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait. No, wait, are you sure that she's all right? She's all right. She's got a flesh wound in her left shoulder. Well, uh, why would anyone want to shoot Peggy? Well, somebody else was shot, too. A man, he was killed. He was killed. Wait a second, Inspector. Now, what, what's going on here? Oh, what is this? What's going on with this world, anyway? I thought I left all that insanity back in Nam. What was that, a nut? Some nut running around with a gun, shooting at anybody he saw? Maybe. Wait a second now. That's why you're here, isn't it? You think I had something to do with that? Weapon used was an M16 rifle. You're an expert marksman. Yeah, so are a few thousand other guys. You were in San Francisco yesterday. Most people would have visited their fiance. You didn't. All right, that's my business. Sorry, Captain, that's police business right now. I was buying a house. You were buying a house? That's right, for Peggy and me. See, I wanted to have it all settled so I could surprise her with it when I get there with my discharge. Hey, you want to check that out? Yes, I'd like to, please. Okay, I'll go get the escrow papers. <sighs> Say, Inspector, uh, was Peggy, uh, was she with this guy, the one that got killed? No. No, whoever did it shot Peggy, ran away and opened up in the man on the other side of campus. Well, I guess that's gonna make it a little easier on both of us. You see, uh, I'm still learning to walk a little. 
But I'm afraid it's going to be quite a while before I learn to run anywhere. Shots came from that basement transom over there this time. We checked inside. Looked like he spent the night waiting. Anybody got hit? A girl? Dead. What's her name? Sheila Davis. Works as a waitress in a coffee shop. Not a student. It's senseless. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't understand. All right. Let me try to explain it to you again. The girl that was killed is a ringer for you. It's amazing, but she's the same size. Same hair color, same style. And it's possible the man that killed her thought it was you. That's bizarre. I mean, who'd want to kill me? We just don't want to take any chances. We, we want you to stay in the apartment and don't even go out on the terrace. Oh, Lieutenant, I mean, you know. If anyone comes to the door, you let Officer Powell answer it. And you stay out of sight. All right. But it had to be a coincidence. I mean, just a coincidence. That's possible. But we know one thing for certain. Whoever shot you, for whatever reason, is still out there. Hello? Hi. Mrs. Shanninger? Oh, I'm sorry. She isn't taking any calls. She'll take this one. Who is this? Just put her on. No, I'm afraid I'll have to take a message. May I have your name, please? Look, lady, I got to talk to Mrs. Shanninger now. You put her on. Vera? Who is it? Just some brash young man. One of David's students, maybe. Look, th there's no need for you. Oh, it's all right. I'll take it. Hello? Hi. Hello? It's done. I see. Um, just a minute. I, um, I need to get something to write on. Okay, go ahead. I just want the rest of the bread, lady. You got it? Vera, would you get me that pan that's on my desk? This one's run dry. Thank you. Do you know what you've done? Yeah. I've done a job. And I gave the cops one they're never going to finish. No, you killed the wrong girl. Do you understand? The wrong girl. Why didn't you just do what I asked you? How could you be so stupid? Shut up. You hear me? Shut up! You gotta go back tomorrow, huh? Well, never gives you much time. Well, to you travel first hey. class no matter what the ticket says, well, don't you? Well, there's gotta be some fringe benefits to this job. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you very much for the flight. Okay, we can scratch Melder. He's he clean, was... I know. What is this? I got jet lag or something? I just got off the boat. How do you know? The killer's been at it again. A girl this time, DOA. Oh, yeah. Takes us right back to zero, huh? Nope. What do you mean, nope? Two incidences of random shooting last week, two more yesterday. Girl gets hit today. If she doesn't tie to Peggy or Shannon, she ties no to way. Peggy. How? No matter what the distance, she looks like a twin. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me hear how this goes down. All right. Let's say that you wanted to kill somebody by sniper fire, but you wanted it to look as though the people you hit are random victims. How would you go about it? 
Study the habits of the people I wanted to hit. Routine schedules. Set up a pattern. A few random shots to make it look like I'd gone berserk. And when he hits the people he's really after? Nobody suspects there's a motive. <laughs> you still think there's a motive, don't you? Well, sometimes you gotta play the odds. There's usually a motive, right? I don't see it this time. Oh, come on, come on now. This isn't your first triangle. You know, don't you, that whenever there's a triangle, one of those three sides is gonna be jealous. All right, scratch Shannager. That leaves Peggy and Mrs. Shannager. You got it. Yes, sir. A woman's score. Mike, but a woman, there's no way she's gonna do that. With enough money to buy a hit. No pros will operate like that, taking the chance of firing a broad daylight. I didn't daylight. say it was a pro. I said she bought somebody. It's possible. It's possible, but I don't think so. Okay. All right. But I'm telling you, she did it, Steve. What's the proof? Like I said before, you've got the energy, I've got the aye, time. Aye, he's thinking. Look out. Come in. Remember telling me that she gave you a rough time because you linked her husband with a wild brook cloud? A lot of balls. Scurrilous insinuations, right? You still haven't got it, have you? What? Will you use some of that energy that you've got up there? The wild brook crowd. Who said it first, you or she? Right. Oh. Right, right, that's it, you're right. Peggy moved out of there weeks ago. So if Mrs. Shannager didn't know about Peggy and her husband, how did she know about Wildbrook? Right. May I be the first to congratulate you? Hello. Alan? How did you know? No, I'm fine, really. Well, when? Oh, no, Alan. No, of course I do. It's, it's just that not today. I mean, I've got exams. No, I've told you I'm fine, really. Well, I won't be here. I, I mean, I'll be leaving for the library. All right, then I'll meet you. No, that's silly. Don't take a cab. It costs too much. No, no, it's no problem, really. I'll be there. What time? Okay, bye. Is everything all right? Oh, yeah. It's just a friend of mine. I don't remember saying Thing. I knew Mrs. Shannon here, and I believe your sister does, too. Mrs. Day? Well, I can't quite be sure. Well, now, somewhere out there in the streets, there's a man with a gun. He's killed two people already. One of them was a waitress, and the other one was your own brother. Vera, you can see what they're trying to do, can't you? Neither of us has anything more to say to you. We're calling our attorney. Vera? It works. What are you doing? It isn't dry. What's that got to do with anything? That phone call from the young man when you sent me out of the room. Was, was that the man you hired to murder David? I'd step aside at this time in our lives to let him leave me for that tantalizing little tramp. David had referred him to a psychiatric clinic. One night when David was out of town, when I thought David was out of town, he turned up at the house. I told David about it later, and he was terribly upset. He said the man had homicidal impulses. You don't know his name? No. Nope. Could be in your husband's records, couldn't it? No, because he was never a patient. You still haven't told us how you got together with him. Well, that night he came to the house. He was rambling, angry at everything that frustrated him. 
anyone who'd ever accused him of being worthless or stupid. And I recalled he said, it wasn't right. Someone as smart as he should be working in a car wash all his life. So when you found out about your husband and Peggy Dunnigan, you went looking for him, is that it? Yes, that's it. That paragon of a husband of mine. That phony and his prostitute. Why should... Why should their lives go untouched when mine have been ruined? How did you find the man? I made a list of all the car washes. Just started looking. I found it the next day. Place on Cooper Monroe. You know the address? No. Near Sutter. Go on. Well, he agreed to meet me, and so I picked him up across the street in the car wash. We drove around. And I made the offer. How much? Five thousand then. Twenty thousand when they were both dead. How are you going to get in touch with him to pay the rest? Post office box number. He was going to send it to me. But he didn't. He used the telephone. So I was talking about how smart he was. I was going to have the police crawling up their own walls. Hmm. The sniper fire. He didn't say that. When it started on the campus a week ago, I, I didn't even make the connection. I couldn't believe that... It, put anyone else in danger. I just wanted the both of them gone. All right, you know that this is a free and voluntary statement. Yes. All right, go to the car wash with the description. When you get a name, book him. Right. Book her. Officer, the call's for you. Oh, thank you. You can't use the extension out here. It doesn't work. I don't know what's the matter with it, but you can use the one in my room. Fine. It's Lieutenant Stone. Uh, he had to leave the line for a minute, but he said he'd be right back on. Thanks.
Well, can you think of anything else, sir? I see. All right, well, thank you for your help. Right, goodbye. Car wash manager knows who we're talking about, but the name isn't gonna help. Why not? John Jones. He says help's hard to get, so he doesn't push it. <laughs> anything else about him? Yeah, corroboration of what Mr. Shannon just said about his problem. He's had two fights since he's been there, both times because somebody called him stupid. Oh, yeah, one other thing. Manager says he might be dangerous. Oh, yeah, that's gonna help us a lot, isn't it? Come on, let's get to the apartment. What? Come on, come on, come on. Come on, he's not dumb enough to go after Peggy now that he Mr. Might Shannon know, has been arrested. He might not know, but we gotta play it safe no matter what the odds are. Lieutenant, she said it was you and I should wait on the line till you got back, and then while I was waiting, she must have slipped out. Do you have any idea where she went? There was a phone call earlier. Who was on the phone? I heard her use the name Alan. Melder. Did you hear anything else? Well, it sounded kind of personal. I didn't want to eavesdrop, but she was upset about something. What about? Well, it was like he was going to do something and she didn't want him to. She wouldn't want him showing up here in the living room with police protection. I'll call San Diego to see if he's we'll on the way. We'll check on the way to the airport. San Francisco. 10-4. Can you find out what flight he's on? 10-4. Stand by, Inspectors A-1. Looks like we're headed in the right direction. Inspectors A-1. A-1, go ahead. Captain Melder was booked down to Cal West Flight 274, San Diego to San Francisco. 10-4. Can you give me an ETA on that flight? Operations reports Cal West 274 is already on the ground. 10-4. Wouldn't you know it? Today it's got to be on time. Come on, move it. You gonna pay for my ticket? at the arrival gate by now. He won't follow her. He won't be able to get that gun of his past that skyjack equipment. Which means he's at the concourse entrance. If he's out here at all. by now. Nothing's happened. I guess he's not here. Well, let's just keep it moving anyway. Come on.
too smudge for that. No, stay back. I'll do it. I swear I'm gonna jump. So don't waste yourself like that. You're too smart for that, right? I won't waste yourself. Think about it. I just think you're too smart. You don't want to be wasted. You want to show people how smart you are. You want to show people what you think, right? No, hold it, hold it. I got a bullet in you. You need a doctor, right? Just think he'll fix you up. He'll let you show people who you are. You'll be smart. You can be smart to people. Flash Carmen comes roaring up. Well, Captain, that leisurely stroll may have saved your life. Well, it uh, wasn't my leg that slowed us down. Oh? No, when I saw him getting off the plane, I knew I'd have to tell him everything. So we sat right down and talked. We have a lot to forget and a lot more to look forward to. Say, do you feel like coming to a wedding? A wedding? You count on Good. Bye. Bye-bye. I think they've got a good-looking future, don't you? Yeah, I think so. I think your future's looking pretty good, too. What? Listen, I want to fill out that report myself. No, 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 I can no, do that. No, no, I want the brass to know what you did oh, up there. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. You know something? You are a romantic. You are a real romantic. What? Yeah. Well, just because I don't read those highfalutin books of yours from the Times Book of You doesn't mean I don't have feelings. You know what? What? When I look at the San Francisco skyline at night, I think it's beautiful. Oh, my. No, I really do. <laughs> you know, and when... I think there's poetry in Rick Berry's leap into the air when he when he dumps that ball into the basket. I really do, yeah. And when Bobby Bond gets up there and starts to swing at that ball and then he hits that home run, why, well, I think that's music. Martin production, starring Carl Malden, also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars Noah Beery, Sam Elliott, Lane Bradbury, special guest star Jim Davis. Tonight's episode, The Hard Breed.
And here he comes, young Billy Davis from Dakota, Oklahoma, right? Nobody has done that. Yeah, we right up, Billy Boy. From Austin, Texas, the leader for the all-round championship this year, Ken Johnson. All right, sir. Hello, everybody. Pete Jackson, ABC's Wide World of Sports, from the Cow Palace in San Francisco, the Grand National Rodeo. Most of the top cowboys in America, with some of the finest stock ever assembled, ready for a taste of the old West. Working with us to keep us up to date on what's going on, Lex Conley, former champion cowboy himself, now manager of the Cow Palace. Lex, let's turn those cowboys loose. All right, Keith, and the contest we're going to see right now is the bull riding. Bull riding. Now, this is the one event Well, we got to go. I know. <laughs> now, tell me, how did a fashion designer get so hooked on the rodeo, huh? My grandmother had a ranch in Wyoming. I spent my summers there. Yeah. Well, you're hanging out with the cowboys, huh? Shh. We'll pick a winner. Well, I think you'd have to say that it's going to be one of the Johnson brothers. Oh, it's down to the Johnson brothers. It's down to the Johnson brothers. Oh, the Johnson brothers. You know, none of this really makes any difference. When you get on a bull, uh, here's Sonny Bray's score. 61 points on that one, and now ready to go on Mo, if we lose that table, we don't get another one. They got a little thing called a waiting list, you know? Just one more ride, okay? I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no. This old boy's tough to fight and tough to hook, Clint. Watch him. I hear he's already put in for a pinch. It's gonna be like riding whipped cream, Clint. <laughs> yeah, well, you better take another look, little brother. I hear that he's a real honker. Hey, Rosie, how about a kiss for luck? Where'd you get that? That ain't a way to ride. Let me have it. How about you, Bo? Aren't you gonna wish me luck? You've lived this long without it. Hey, Clint, you drawn a bad one. He's mean to fight. You just do your job. I'll do mine. <laughs> sure. Hey, Rosie, how come you're so pretty and you're hooked up with such an ugly, ornery, bow-legged cuss as this? Let her buck. <laughs> Dad, he's dead. <laughs> God. No. It's like riding your headstone every second. Yeah. Let's go. You've seen it before, haven't you? People dying, yeah. I haven't. Awful. Well, it happened fast, and he was doing something he wanted to. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Hey, Roy. Bo? You all right? Yeah. 
You know, this was plants from the first day in full. Turned him into the best calf horse in the circuit. Nobody could ride him like Clint. Nobody will. Where's Ken? He's, uh, with Rosie. Where you been, Marty? I've been looking for you. What is it, Marty? Now, I just keep a thinking if I could have got to that bull quicker, Clint, it wasn't your fault. I know that now. I, I've been over there in the arena kind of mulling over in my head what happened, and I found this. I figured in all the excitement it must have got buried in the dirt there. Been cut clean nearly halfway. That's right, with a razor sharp knife or something. That rope come off the bull that Clint was riding. Are you trying to tell me it was no accident? Ah, oh, Roy, you know Clint was too good a hand to come off a bull like that or get caught with them hooves. Roy, I'm telling you, Clint was killed. <laughs> Dashboard. He's got one foot outside the window. He's holding on. He turns over and he looks at me. He's... Oh, no. No, no. Oh, yes. No, no. Yes, yes. Sorry. I apologize for busting in like this, Miss uh... oh, Marine. This is Lieutenant Michael Stone, Marine Mallory. Marine. Oh, uh, you're Mo. Nice to meet you, Lieutenant. Or is it? No. It could have been nicer. We got a special request. I'll fill you in on the way. my car. I'll try to call you with you, okay? Sorry, Marie. Pretty expensive for a cop, isn't it? It's a very special occasion. Yeah, she looks special. I'll bet Juan Marichal wishes he had your pitch. I just wish I had his salary. Thank you very much. So fill me in. Well, the way I hear it, we've got thousands of witnesses. A Rodeo cowboy was riding a bull. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. I saw that on uh, television. But it was an accident, unless you're going to book the bull. Well, I guess you didn't see it all, unless you saw the bull use a knife. You've got so many eyes on that girl, you can't see the television set. If somebody did cut this part way, could they count on the rest of it giving? Yeah, they give without being cut sometimes. When them bulls start kicking, it's like hell with the lid off. What would be the motive? I don't care about why, just who. We'll do our best. We're outsiders here, Lieutenant. Strangers. Aside from Clint being my son, he was a man. And no big city red tape can change that. Mr. Johnson, if it was murder, we'll find out who did it. Finds a killer, he's gonna hang him. Yeah, he did lose his son. What did you get from the other convoys? Well, everybody says it was an accident that was bound to happen sooner or later. How's that? Because Clint used to hit it before each ride. Booze, huh? Booze, yeah, and pills, pain pills. He had a bad leg, he never let it heal. Well, then why did he keep riding? Well, they're like that. Look, I met one of those guys over there. He used to ride with two broken wrists. If a cowboy can crawl, he'll ride. Yeah, I guess they are a hard breed, all yeah. right. Say, how about the rope? Well, each man usually handles his own, but with Clint, he had somebody else who helped him. Who was that? His brother. Hello. Hello. Howdy. Uh, I'm Lieutenant Stone. This is Inspector Keller. Hi. Which one of you is Jensen? Oh, that'd be me, Lieutenant. Well, then you must be Bo Dobbs. Yes, yes, sir. I know that you saw one of our officers before and told him what you saw, but I'd like to ask you a couple of questions myself, if you don't mind. Anything we can do. Thanks a lot. I hear that uh, you two go way back. Uh, more years than I'd care to mention. We were riding a circuit when it was nothing but dusty old towns. <laughs> Bo and me, we rode Bronx together till our rumps turned into raw meat. <laughs> That's when I turned to clowning. Bo handles the stock. We've been saving up to buy us a little ranch. Fix not going in together. Well, how long have you known the Johnsons? Well, Roy and Bo, they, they go way back. Before we even met, ain't it? Uh, Roy's a good old boy. 
I sure hate to see him hurt this way. But what about Clinton and his brother? Were they as close as you two? Oh, they were as fierce when it come to competition. But they respected one another. Roy wouldn't have it no other way. But weren't they uh, one two in the championships? Hey, now, wait a minute. You ain't thinking that Ken cut that rope, are you? Just trying to find a reason. Well, if winning the championship was reason, the circuit would be lined with dead cowboys. They was loving brothers. Didn't they ever disagree upon anything? What was it about? I expect they'll find out anyways. Find out what? You tell them, Bo. It, uh, it was Rosie. Rosie? Yes, That's sir. Clint's wife. Oh, she ain't no bad girl. It's just, well, she's pretty as a pair of pink slippers. They fought over her? Well, they got into it a couple years ago. I still got me a split tooth from breaking it up. <laughs> of course, that's before Clint and Rosie were married. Before they were married, well, Rosie was Ken's girl. Police want to talk to us? Tomorrow. I told them the, uh... The little widow was so broken up over the whole thing that she just couldn't talk. I still don't buy anyone who set out to kill Clint. Somebody shaved that rope. What do you think about that girl? I don't know what to think about it. Did you ever once, just once, care for him? I loved him. Till he started slipping into a bottle every day in somebody else's bed every night. <clears throat> You know how it was with him, what you wanted to say. Maybe, uh, maybe Clinton wasn't much of a husband to her. But he's still a son to me and a brother to you. Just leave her be. Well, she needs someone, Bo. I know, but not you. She wants something besides a cracked tooth. Seven, you weren't home. Where does she live anyway, Monterey? Seven o'clock. I knew it. You know, I knew you were going to do that. That's why. I That's went... why you went to pick up your car last night, Lieutenant. Very good. Very, very good. You know, I think you got a future with this department. You're cruising. I really mean it. You're cruising. Listen, I've been cruising all morning. Rosie Johnson. She was born Rosalind Commons in Odessa, Texas, 1944. Folks were dirt farmers, and she took off when she was 15. She's been with the rodeo ever since. She competed with the women on the circuit until she married Clint Johnson two years ago. Where did you get that? Well, those cowboys get up with the chickens, too, you know. <laughs> I guess they do. Is that all? No. Her husband has an insurance policy. $50,000. And she is the beneficiary? The only one, yeah. So what'd you get, huh? 
sitting here in the nice comfort of your warm office well, while I was out there watching where I stepped? Well, I got in touch with the TV network who filmed the Rodeo. Good. They said we could look at the tapes anytime we wanted to. I ran a make on Ken Johnson. He's got a record here someplace. Here it is. Mr. Bring a Peace, uh -huh. Drunken Disorderly Assault. Murder. Nothing big, but there is a history of violence there. Yeah, sounds like you just got along too much after. I got the course. autopsy report on uh, Johnson's brother. The alcoholic content was 1.2%. Okay, enough to be legally drunk. And plenty out of control when you mix it with those painkillers he was taking. That's a bad combination. He could have fallen off that bowl even if the rope wasn't cut. Yeah. What'd the lap say on that rope? It was cut. So what do you think? I think for openers, we've got two people who might have wanted to see him dead. First, his wife for the insurance and then his brother for his wife. Now, that's just like old times. I make it 15-9. Uh, you shave that just a little, and you'll be sitting in for the state finals. Morning. Mrs. Johnson? Yes, sir? Out there's Lieutenant Stone. He's the man trying to find out what happened to Clint. Well, I better walk this horse out. I'll see you, Lieutenant. Quite a workout. But not exactly the grieving widow. No, I didn't say that. Everybody has to sort of work that out for themselves. You do know about the insurance money. Yes, I do. Fifty thousand dollars. Give me a good reason to want to see Clint dead, wouldn't it? Maybe you'd like to tell me how you feel about that. Just like I grew wings. <laughs> Are you planning on doing any flying? You're not very subtle, Lieutenant. That's how Ken Johnson goes from Rodeo to Rodeo, isn't it? Flies his own plane? Who told you about Ken and me? Well, it seems to be common knowledge. And it also must be common knowledge that we broke up a long time ago. I heard that, too. But you don't want to believe it, do you? You want to believe the worst. You want to believe that maybe Ken and I tried to do something to get back together again, huh? Well, somebody cut that rope, and I'm just trying to find out who had a reason. I think you'd be interested in that, too. Unless you know already. You gonna arrest me? No. <laughs> then I reckon you don't do things any different here than we do back home. I mean, it's still the United States. You're innocent until you're proved guilty, right? That's right. Then how come I get the feeling you're trying to make me prove I'm innocent? I'm sure I don't know. Unless you're feeling something else, too. Like what? Guilt. thing, huh? Well, you can make more rodeos, build up more points. How'd your brother travel? Same way my dad did, pickup truck. Oh, man, thinks the cowboy ought to travel with a stock. Live with him, get to know him. Rather than shipping him around and meet some fancy schedule. Sounds like they were close. They were. Fact is, Clint tried to mirror Dad. One of his problems. Yeah, that could be tough. I understand your father was world champion. Yeah. It didn't seem to bother you at all. I wasn't under that kind of pressure. Sent me to college instead. I didn't take. Now he just figures me for an educated failure, no matter what I win. Sometimes we get along pretty good. Other times, it's like two bulls butting heads. But you and your brother were close. Close as two brothers can be. We were friends. Rosie. Now, I know she was your girl one time. 
Did that ever cause any friction between you and your brother? Some at first. Rosie knew a lot of guys for either one of us. Clinton knew that. Did it bother Clinton? Look, Ken, the autopsy report showed your brother was loaded on juice and pills. Now, you just told me your brother had a problem living up to your father. Do you have a problem with Rosie? That's none of your business. Your brother was murdered. Well, that's what you say. I say it was an accident. neck and told Charlie that he was riding a milk cow. He, he was so drunk, he didn't even know the difference. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reverse it next time. I'd give a lot of money to see Charlie try to milk a bull. <laughs> Rosie, lay off that stuff, will you? How come? I want to talk to you. About what? Well, you know that spread that Bo and me always talking about getting? We found her. Where is it? Well, it's in Montana, just a few miles out of Ennis. It's got a, oh, a, a pretty little creek runs through the middle of it and a, a good place for horses. That's terrific, Marty. I'm really happy for you. Rosie, what you gonna do with no one to look out for you, huh? $50,000 look out to me just fine. They won't last. Only people last on that spread that Bo and me's going to get. There's a place for you. You think on it, will you? You can't keep just drifting along the circuit like this. Thanks, Marty, but I'll be just fine. Been wanting to catch up with you. We're still ready with one sweet offer for you wearing our shirts next season. Later, huh? Rosie. Come on. I was just looking at Ken. She's still at Johnson, Marty. I reckon that makes her hard to go. seen this toad sticker before? No, I ain't never seen it before. Don't start running me around in circles, Marty. Oh, oh yeah, I recognize it. Now, that, that's Ken's knife. That's the one old Roy brought him from Mexico, ain't it? That's right. You want to know where I found it? Oh, maybe you already know where I found it, oh, Marty. Where are you going, Bo? I'm gonna go tell Roy what happened. There ain't no call for that. I'll tell you what there ain't no call for, Marty. There ain't no call for no little pink pretty like Rosie to go around messing up other people's lives. I seen you sitting here with her. And I seen them two sashaying out of here together, and I know what's going on. And Roy's gonna know the truth, Marty. And this knife. Tells it all. to show you before I show the police. Bo found that in the sawdust back of the chutes. Kind of a foreign-looking deal, ain't it? Yeah. 
Look close, Roy. Ain't them rope hairs on the blade? Why are you giving this to me? Well, I, that, that ain't no store-bought knife. I never seen one like it before, and I figured maybe if, if you could put a face to it. Well, I know how you're trying to find the cutter. You did right. I'll just find a drink. I was down. He was just trying to cheer me up. I don't see anything so wrong in that. Well, what you see doesn't matter right now, Rosie. It's what other people are looking for, and they're looking to make you answer for Clint's death. Well, I didn't want he did. I didn't. Clint was the closest thing I ever came to love. I thought what, once I had him, I wouldn't need anything else. <laughs> and then everything went sour on us. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I did what he did. <laughs> Sure, Dad. Go on, I'll talk to you later. What you just saw there, don't go make anything of it. I want a car bet you. Let me that jackknife of yours. I haven't got it. I'm talking about the one I give you. The one I picked up in Mexico. I know what you're talking about. I haven't got it. Where is it? Just disappeared. Lost it, I guess. Well, uh, where did you lose it? I don't know. Shoots, maybe. That's where Bo found it. See them hairs? I'm betting they come from Clint's rope. You know what you're saying? I know. He was my brother. Why would I want to kill him? Because you wanted his own. That's why. And what I just seen, you got her. Oh, come on. No, you... Uh-uh. Going to the police? Nope. This is a family doing. Ooh. I'm not gonna fight you. I said I'm not gonna fight you. Well, don't you let me ban your father standing your way. Because I don't consider you my son. Take that damn tin plane of yours and fly it straight in the devil's eyeball. I don't want to ever lay eyes on you again, you hear? Now get! down on all the cowboys by the shoot last night. We got a new suspect. Yeah, who? Bo Dobbs. Dobbs? How come... Shh. Homicide Stone. What's that again? When? All right, we'll get right on it. What's that? You were going to tell me something about Dobbs. Yeah. He had a son on the circuit two years ago. He was in a bulldogging event and he caught a horn through his leg because his partner was negligent. And his partner was Clint Johnson. That's right. And Bo Dobbs swears to this day that Clint was loaded. But why does that put Dobbs on our list? Because the kid's crippled for life. Mmm. Mmm. I give you a whole new wrinkle and you say to me, hmm? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the phone call came from the cow palace. Bo Dobbs is dead. <laughs> I did. He was just lying out there in the corral. Trampled? Oh, no. Bo been around too long. He had too much savvy for anything like that. Steve, comb the area. See what you come up with. Right. Well, Bernie, my friend, what have you got? I won't know for sure till we get him downtown, but it looks like it was just a blow to the back of the head by a blunt instrument of some kind. Nothing like a hoof print or a horn. When did it happen? I'd say less than an hour ago. Let me know for sure, will you? Right.
Mike? Yeah. Looks like part of a shirt. Anybody recognize this? Was Bo murdered? Well, it looks that way, Mr. Jensen. You know anybody wearing a shirt like that? Bo was one of ours. We'll handle it. Yeah, yeah. we'll handle it. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Hold it right there. I want no vigilante homespun law here. Now, is that clear? Or do I have to make it plainer? Dobbs was killed on my beat. And I want that man just as bad as you do. Now, let me start again. Does anybody recognize this shirt? Mr. Jensen? Ken Johnson was wearing a shirt like that. Who? Ken Johnson. He was wearing a shirt like that. Ken was wearing a shirt like this, all right. Mr. Johnson, your son has disappeared. Now, do you have any idea where we can find him? Now, if you think this is just a family matter, you're wrong. Well, before I tell you, I'm going to have a say. I run Ken off because, well, because I figured he killed Clint. Well, don't you think that's for the police to decide? When it comes to Ken, it's still family. But he wouldn't have killed Bo. Put to it, a breed like Ken might kill a man for a woman. A lot of good men been done in by a shiny little thing like Rosie. But when it comes to killing an old-timer like Bo, no. That's a notch or two below a wolf. And that ain't Ken. Then I guess you'd better tell me why you think he killed Clint. I lost one son, Lieutenant. Now you're asking me to lose the other. I'm sorry. Lieutenant. Belongs to Ken. Found behind the chutes. This look like rope hairs. You found it? No, Bo did. I've had my say. You most likely can find Ken at the airport. Stop him. Let's give it a try. trying to take off. My old man called away to blow out. He's clean. Is this part of your shirt? Looks like one I just threw away. Must have come off when he was tearing into me. Why? Where'd you get it? Where'd you have this blowout? I buy his trailer. Why? Because it was found in the corral where Bo Dobbs was murdered. No, sir. Then how did you get those bruises? I told you, my old man. Look, I never fought with Bo, just my old man. Ask him. Why would I want to kill Bo? Because Bo found this knife and he gave it to your father. Uh-uh. You thought your father wouldn't talk. 
and you fixed it so that Dobbs couldn't. Oh, come on, it didn't happen that way. I swear it didn't. You went straight to the bar where you picked up your sister-in-law, and then you went right to your father's trailer. That's right. And after you fought with your father, you went to the airport with a man you didn't even know. Oh, come on, I, I told you, his name is Garner, Gardner, he's a salesman. And he wanted you to endorse some shirts. That's right. Look, I've been trying to brush him off, but he tagged along when me and Rosie left the bar. And then he cornered me again when I left my dad. You can check it out. We are. When did you see this knife again? Oh, I told you I don't remember exactly. This morning sometime. Did you get a hold of him? Did he tell you? His name's John Gardner. is a shirt representative with Western Sunset. He's staying at the Bayshore Motel. And he tells it just like Ken. Even down to the airport gate he dropped him off at. He's willing to sign a statement, anything. I told you. I told you I didn't do it. What's he doing here? I asked him to come. He said you couldn't have done it to him. That's plain you didn't buy his word. It's not his word I'm questioning. It's yours. I hear you were fixing to take off. Well, you did kind of put the wind in my back. How's it look? Well, it looks as though he's clear as far as Dobbs is concerned. But you still think I killed Clint? I think two people had good reason to cut that rope. Ken and Rosie? That's right. And I don't figure it was Rosie. Why not? Because cutting that rope wouldn't guarantee that her husband would die. But I might have just to win that championship. Did you? No! But you did help your brother cinch that rope around the bull. I'll tell you what, Lieutenant. The way Clint was hitting the booze and the pills, I didn't need to cut this to beat him. He was beating himself. But he must have thought you did when he brought this knife to your father. Bo didn't bring me the knife. Marty did. Wait a minute. Jensen brought you that knife? Yeah. And he said Dobbs found it? That's right. Said he found it behind the bull shoots. Can we run that network tape? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, why? I want to see something, excuse me. Here. All right, could you hold it right there, please? Look at that. What? Mr. Johnson, what is the first thing a clown's supposed to do when a rider goes down? They start waving off the bull. Then that's what Jensen should be doing, is that right? Well, Marty's getting on a bit now. Works a barrel, mostly. Doesn't take chances like the rest of the boys. But he's not taking any chances at all. He's just standing there. He could have done something, couldn't he? Well, I guess he could. All right, let me put it another way. He's done everything right since then, hasn't he? Steve, get it out, will you? I don't know, Mike. I'm just trying to put the pieces together. And I remember Mo telling me the clown's supposed to keep the bull away from the rider when he's down. I sort of half remember seeing this one clown just standing there. It was Jensen. And Jensen found the rope. Jensen brought us a knife. He found Dobbs. And he could have seen Ken and his father fighting and find that piece of shirt. He could have planted it by Dobbs, too. Yeah. Don't ask me why. I haven't found the motive. But Jensen was the guy that got us thinking about Ken and Rosie in the first place, you remember? Yeah, the fight. The split tooth. Mr. Johnson, did Ken and Clint really have that fight? Yeah, they sure did. That girl's bad news clean through. But Jensen doesn't see it that way, does he? What? No, he, uh... He thinks she's kind of special, right? Marty? Sure. He was with Rosie when you went to see her, right? Mm-hmm. And Ken said he was with her at the tavern? And do you remember how he defended her when we asked about Ken and Clint fighting over her? Yeah. I sure do. Pretty as a pair of pink slippers. Get up there. Rosie! Rosie, what, what are you doing? I'm getting out of here. Well, you can't pull up stakes and go just like that. I got to. You can't say. I stick around here, I'll mess him up the same way I did Clint. Well, hold on a spell. I, I'll get me that spread up in Montana and you could go there. That's sweet, Marty, but I'm probably just going back to Texas. No. You ain't running out on me now. It's gonna be special for us. Not like I was with Clint and maybe Ken. It's you and me. That's the way I always planned. You know, the more I think about it, the more I think you could be right. Old Marty was always around, paying Rosie special attention. With Clint dead, 
Ken and Cheo. He could figure he might have a chance. Yeah, he could have killed Clint and framed Ken. The more I think about it, I think I was wrong. Why is that? Because Jensen wasn't around the shoes long enough to cut that rope, was he? Well, not really. Maybe he didn't cut the rope. What are you saying? The lab said it was. They didn't say when. Only Jensen said that. That's right. Now, wait a minute. You're losing me. Remember when I asked you about the rope and you said sometimes it broke without being cut? Yeah. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe it just broke. You mean it uh, could have been an accident? An accident that Jensen made look like murder by cutting the rope afterwards. To frame Kent. And getting Rosie for himself. It's possible. Let's turn up here. I ain't never stopped thinking about you, Rosie. Not since Fort Worth. Marty. I know you You ain't never said nothing about it since, but well, you think about it too, don't you? Marty, Clint and I had a fight that night. I was at loose ends and I had too much to drink. That night meant everything to me, everything. You, you don't know what it's like following the rodeos around all by yourself, traveling on the road, and, well, after a while, a, a, a fellow gets wondering what's going to happen to him when he gets old and got nobody. Well, that night gave me something to aim for. Marty, we've had a lot of fun. We've had a lot of laughs. You always could make me laugh, but that's it. I ain't talking about laughs, so I'm talking about what we had that night. We had one night. That was it. Oh, we had more, much more. And we're going to have us a ranch, too, you and me. I'm not going away with you. You still don't understand, do you? You don't have to think of Clinton, Ken. I fixed him. What have you done? Oh, nothing bad, uh, except for Poe. He didn't understand, and he wouldn't let us be together. Oh, my God, you killed them. You killed them both. I didn't kill them. It, it was the booze Clint was taking. The booze and all them pills, that's what killed him. When the, when the rope broke and he got tossed in the dirt, it was just like it happened for you and me. We both wanted him dead. You as much as me, I know that. It was easy for me. I, all I had to do was just hold back a couple of seconds. I know he was so full of booze he couldn't scramble away from the bull. And then I... Then I see how easy it'd be to... To fix it so that Ken was gone, too. But Bo, he seen me take Ken's knife. And, and he knowed how I felt about you. He figured out what I'd done. He was going to tell Roy about it, and I couldn't have that. That's crazy. You are crazy. Don't you call me that. Get your hands up, you old fool. You just see I love you like I don't love nothing else. Don't you touch me. <laughs>
man. I guess everybody would like to buy back one moment in their lives. Maybe he was lucky enough to have his. goodbye. I wish you good luck. Uh, thanks. Thanks for getting me out of a tight one. And where's Rosie? She left this morning, back to Texas. She'll make out. I gotta go. Right, I'm good. Hey, don't forget what I told you. He'd be learning to fork up. Biggest rule giver since Moses, isn't he? <laughs> hey, 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 popcorn. I'll pay for it. I got it. No, no, let me. I got it. Right Please. here. How much? You paid last time. Uh, let me. 25 2 here. Next time. How much did you pay for? Two. And now, I'm going to shoot up the run from Austin, Texas. Kenny Dion. Right, right with man. Yes, sir. Right, right with man. 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 Right, right How's the game? It's fine, Terence. Haven't seen the Medusa, have you? If you mean Etta, she's probably somewhere staying out of your way. Really, my dear, I don't think you want to talk to me that way. I don't think she wants to talk to you at all. 
That's not very kind of you, Roger. You're very wise, considering what we both know about... You struck me. Oh, you are lucky you're such a twerp. Otherwise, I'd flatten that nose of yours so you couldn't poke it in where it doesn't belong. He actually slapped me, Joseph. You saw. A simple misunderstanding, sir. I'm certain nothing more. Oh, there'll be more. There'll be a lot more. Not this evening, sir. Well, I, I have to see Etta. That won't be this evening either, sir. Well, why not? Where is she? Mr. Aubrey, sir, you are in no condition to speak with anyone in position at the moment. Least of all, Etta Randolph. All right, all right, Joseph. You're a good man. You know, that relic from the Barbary Coast doesn't know what she has in you. My car. I think not. I have a taxi cab waiting for you, Mr. Aubrey. It looked as though you might be needing one. Oh, well, that's very good of you, Joseph. I'll have your car delivered in the morning, sir. Taxi! 12, 12 Adams, please. Oh, no, 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 no. What time is it? Precisely 13 minutes to 12, sir. Precisely. Well, that's precisely too early for me. You take me to the crown room. You tell Etta to call me tomorrow at noon. Precisely. Thank you. Drive on. What do you think you're doing here? You have no right to be here. Terence Aubrey, publisher. Terence Aubrey? You know who found him? Inside. Guy named Osborne. He shares the apartment. He had you when it happened? Neighbor thinks he heard a shot about 2.30. Said he thought it came from the outside, a backfire or something. Place is really torn apart inside. Looks like a burglary. You got it all figured, so why does you roust us out of bed? I got a small caliber, 32 maybe. I'll check it. Somebody was expecting him as soon as he opened the door. Osborne, Lieutenant Stone, homicide. You found the body? Yes. Want to tell me about it? Well, I was uh, out of town this evening on business. And when I came back... What time was that? Oh, about 3 or 3.15. Anybody else have a key besides you and Mr. Aubrey? Well, no. no. No one that I know of, no. No one at all, no? No. no. Thought I recognized his name. This is Aubrey's mag. Favorite few. Reedition all there is to know about San Francisco's bluest bloods. <laughs> or dirty laundry. Editorial office is on Kearney. Maybe we ought to have it secured. What do you think? Scandal sheet? Aubrey comes in, finds an intruder? What do you make of this? Edda's at 10 o'clock. So who's Edda? Hmm. Well, there's only one Edda I know in San Francisco. Edda Morris Randolph. Maybe a 
show, 16, when old John J. Randolph found her in a chorus line. One of those old places on the Barbary Coast. <laughs> he was in his 60s. And he died happy. <laughs> well, I should hope so. And she inherited a bundle. A lot of money, that's right. How come you know so much about her? I read the papers. So do I. Yeah, well, she's never been too big on the sports page. Yes, um, are you Mrs. Randolph? No, I am Miss Randolph. Oh, I beg your pardon. That's all right. It happens all the time. <laughs> if you want to see Granny, you'll have to see Joseph. And who is Joseph? He's Granny's major domo. Yes, Miss Julia. They want to see Granny. Well, I'm afraid that's not possible. Police? This way, gentlemen. If you'll wait right here, I'll announce you. Thank you. Not bad. If you like this sort of thing. Mother's not feeling well. I'm sorry to hear that. Granny doesn't usually have visitors before noon. If she yells, just don't pay any attention. We won't. The madam will see you now. Thanks for the tip. boys. Joseph, you lied to me. They're beautiful. I love policemen. <laughs> What's your problem? This is Lieutenant Stone, madam. Lieutenant? And I I'm Inspector Keller. Well, things are looking up at City Hall. Thank you, Joseph. Oh, just a second. Uh, you were at the party last night, weren't you? Yes, sir. Then I think you'd better stay. I assure you it was a very orderly bash. I'm sure it was. But uh, what happened to one of your guests afterwards wasn't. Oh? Well, we understand Mr. Terence Aubrey was invited. Not hardly. I wouldn't invite that little worm to my funeral. But he was here. Insufferably. He suffered a little himself last night. He's in the morgue this morning. Terence is dead? Mm -hmm. That's right. Joseph, lace my tomato juice. <laughs> that sort of news calls for a celebration. Well, it sounds like the two of you are not very close. And that's no secret. But I didn't kill the little weasel. Nobody said he was killed. Of course somebody killed him, and long overdue, too. Well, then maybe you can give us a name. I can give you a whole list. Joseph, where's my copy of the social register? 
It's like that, huh? You'd better believe it, baby. Terrence Aubrey was the bottom of the barrel. No. no. That dreary little cipher made his living off other people's miseries. Blackmail? That's how he kept that yellow rag of his alive. He'd find something unprintable about somebody and then offer not to print it if they'd buy a couple of hundred subscriptions. Did he ever try to blackmail you? He tried. He threatened to reveal my lurid past. <laughs> sure, I was a chorus girl, and no better than I should have been either. But what he didn't know is I was proud of my past, still am. So I sent him a magnum of champagne, told him to go ahead and print it. He never forgave me, but he never messed with me again either. So. You don't know who did it. No clues, no leads, no grubby little fingerprints. No nothing. By any chance, uh, do you know what time he left your party? I haven't the foggiest notion. Mr. Aubrey left at approximately a quarter of twelve, madam. I called the taxi for him. Is that when the party ended? <laughs> I'd be in lots better shape this morning if it had. What time did we close the place down, Joseph? The last guest left. It's about three o'clock, madam. Terence Aubrey left at a quarter to twelve. Are you sure he left all that free liquor so early? He had overindulged, madam, as usual. I thought it best. You asked him to leave? Well. What, did something happen? Well, it was nothing, really. Why don't you tell us anyhow? He had a slight altercation with Mr. Maxwell. With Roger? Yes, madam. They had words. Mr. Maxwell slapped him. That was all. <laughs> Good for him. I didn't think old Roger had it in him. Is, uh, is that the Mr. Maxwell who's... Head of the Merchant Bank. And a real softy. He wouldn't kill a fly. Someone apparently did. Do you happen to have the guest list from last night? Joseph will give it to you. Uh, anything else, boys? Oh, we'll keep in touch if there is. Any time. Like I said, I love policemen. Lists, Lieutenant. 220 of the very best people. Joseph, how many of these people would you say bought subscriptions the hard way? I'd say about half, sir. He was busy, wasn't he? Well, even the very best people have their little secrets. Yeah, well, maybe this time he came up with something that wasn't so little. Randolph's, you went directly to the Crown Room. Seven or eight drinks later, he caught a cab, went directly home. Arriving at 2.30, no trouble en route. What about the car? Parking attendant delivered it this morning. The keys were in it all night. Which means that anybody could have borrowed it, driven it to Aubrey's, killed him, and then came back. Which means we still got 220 suspects. 219. I checked out Aubrey's roommate, Osborne. He was in Sacramento, like he said. What about uh, Maxwell the Slapper? Well, I was just going to go to see him. Do you know that he sits on the boards of five companies? Yeah, take a look. Here it is. Five companies. 
Steve, why don't you go to Terrence Aubrey's editorial office and see what you can find? Any special names? Yeah. Somebody who can afford to pay $50,000 in a cleaning bill. You got his bank account? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> five months, five deposits, each one $10,000 in cash, over and above the normal deposit. Maybe 50 grand would be worth killing for. What do you say? Mm -hmm. Five monthly withdrawals of $5,000 each. Now, he's a big spender. He's got a partner. What do you think, Double Cross? I'm beginning to think there are more reasons to kill Aubrey than we have suspects. Oh, listen, I put a lock on that door. Here's the key. There. Okay, I'll see you. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Maxwell? Yes. Lieutenant Stone? That's right. My wife, Louise. Oh, Louise? Lieutenant Stone. Well? She works for the police department. I assume this has to do with Terrence Aubrey? Yes, it does. And I understand that last night the two of you had something going on there. Well, I slapped him in the face, if that's what you mean. I should have decked him. Now, if that little scum wants to press charges... No, 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 he won't be doing that. He's dead. Dead? Someone shot him last night. Oh, my God. Killed him? But why? Well, I was hoping you could tell me. Why did you slap him? Well, according to your book, Lieutenant, he was drunk and disorderly. According to mine, he was completely out of line. Did he try to sell you a block of uh, subscriptions? 
Now, look, Stone. I don't intend to answer any more questions. Speak to my attorneys if you like. Roger. I think under the circumstances, we owe the lieutenant the truth. I was buying the subscriptions. Oh, Louise. It was our one and only separate vacation two years ago. A beach boy in Barbados. It seemed a small price to pay to keep a cheap moment private. So why the slap? Well, I told you. He'd been coming on real strong. He asked us if we'd seen Mrs. Randolph, and we told him, no, we hadn't seen her all evening. And he grabbed my arm, and I slapped him. It's as simple as that. You hadn't seen Mrs. Randolph? No, well, she was upstairs, I suppose. Poor Joanna wasn't feeling well. Poor Joanna? That's her daughter. She hasn't been right since her marriage. A bet. She married her chauffeur. Marriages like that are complete disasters. It's better to go to Barbados, especially if you're involved with somebody like Reed. Reed? Uh, John Reed, her husband. If Joanna is sick, it's only because of him. What do you mean, sick? Well, I don't mean to gossip. Well, there has been talk of drugs, but nobody seems to know the whole story. Except Joanna. And her mother. And maybe Terence Aubrey. Lieutenant, my husband didn't kill Terence. And neither did Joanna. And as for Etta, well, she might call him out and horsewhip him. But she wouldn't waste a good bullet. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. I'm sorry I interrupted your game. Goodbye. No problem. Inspectors 8-1 to headquarters. Inspectors 8-1. 10-4, any messages? Inspectors 8-1, we've been advised Inspector Keller has been injured and is at Central Emergency. Will you respond? 10-4, I'm on my way. Right to your right. Okay, you can get up now. <sighs> is he all right, Doc? Yeah, a few cuts and a bruised ego. If I were you, I'd take it easy for a day or so. Well, I think you should tell that to the lieutenant. I learned one thing in the Army. I never tell anything to lieutenants. I'm telling you. Okay. You All right, thanks a lot, Doc. No, he's right. You don't look too good. Come on, I'll drive you home. Give me that. Thank you. Oh, man. You're okay, huh? Yeah, I'm fine. You're sure? I'm sure. Okay, easy, easy. Uh, nothing bothers you? No, nothing. Okay, now tell me what happened. <laughs> you want to hear it step by step? Step by step. Okay, I go up to Aubrey's office. I find the lock on the door has been broken. So I bop on in, and what do I find? A fire in the wastebasket. I go to put it out, somebody hits me over the head. By the time I get it together, the guy's halfway down to his car. Did you get a good look at him? Yeah, I got a good shot of his tailpipes. Pretty good driver. Professional. Huh? Like a chauffeur, maybe. Well, you got somebody in mind? Yeah. Come on, let's check out Aubrey's files. I got a hunch. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Look under the R's. For Randolph or Reed. <laughs> it's the only one that's not there. Bingo. John Reed. Recognize him? Could be. John Vincent Reed. He's married to her, was to Mrs. Randolph's daughter. Before that, he was her chauffeur. And before that, a professional stock car racer. Huh. Aubrey kept a complete file. How about this? Convicted, possession of narcotics, Phoenix, 1961. Arrested, same offense, Seattle, 64 and 65. And one for suspicion of sale and distribution, 68. No conviction. Sounds like a real junkie. Well, that fits, too. Here's a Randolph file. It's been cleaned out. There's a few notes. One of a little girl, Julia Reed, born 4-13-66, St. Mary's Hospital, heroin addiction. Mother was addicted while she was caring. Yep. Mm. Anything else? Yeah, something about legal papers. Draw a legal complaint. Hold for file. Call Narco. See if they can come up with Reed's address. Right. And then um, find out who did Aubrey's legal work. And I'm going to take... This is Etta Morris Randolph. I could shoot the eyebrows out of a gnat when I was 15. And I still can. I believe you. Look, Lieutenant, 
I was sweet and charming with you this morning, but then you were in my parlor. Now you're in my trophy room, so what do you want? I want to talk to your daughter. Sorry, she's ill. I know that. And I know how ill she's been. You have been busy, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Pretty busy. For instance, I know that five months ago, you cashed in $50,000 worth of securities. And every month since then, you've been withdrawing $10,000 in cash. May I ask why? I needed pocket money. Oh, that's an awful lot of pocket money. Depends on the kind of pants you're wearing. Yeah, I guess you've got something there. Aubrey's been blackmailing you, hasn't he? And you've been paying him off to keep your daughter's addiction out of his dirty mail. You know, I keep trying to like you, Lieutenant. But you're making it very difficult. Well, then maybe I'd better go to your daughter and talk to her. No. Mrs. Randolph, I'm investigating a murder. I heard that this morning. I hadn't heard you suspected my daughter. I could go for a subpoena. I see. All right. Last night, while some nice, civic-minded citizen was killing Terence Aubrey, my daughter was under a doctor's care. His name is Anthony Carson, if you'd care to verify it. I may do that. And where were you last night? You know, I could have you fired for even asking that question. That still doesn't answer it. No, and I don't intend to. Joseph, stay out of my affairs, Lieutenant, or I might just have your badge. Is that understood? Yes, ma'am. Now, you understand me. I don't work for you. I work for all the people in the city of San Francisco. And right now, my job is to find out who killed Terrence Aubrey. If you don't want to help me, that's fine. But don't fight me. Because there's no way you win. Lieutenant, I was going to have Joseph show you, but I think you know where you can go. He's not here. You know when he'll be back? Who knows? But he works here, doesn't he? Yeah, when he's not stoned. You know where I can find him? Wherever he can get a fix. The guy was looking bad when he left. Thank you for all the help. Hey, nothing against you. But the guy tried to turn my sister on, you know? I don't have much to do with him. Okay. If he comes on by, give me a call, will you? Sure. Is she still on drugs? No. So what happened last night? Lieutenant, one answer does not necessarily lead to another. You know I'm not at liberty to discuss my patients. I know, I know that. She's such a lovely girl, too. But I've got a murder to solve, and if I have to pull her in and give her to the DA, I'm going to do that. Now, can't she take the pressure? No, she's not that stable. Lieutenant, she is not involved. I put her under sedation last night at 8 o'clock. She would have been sound asleep by midnight. Did you bandage her wrists? I happened to see her this morning. Her left arm was bandaged. Doc, I can smell suicide. All right, Lieutenant. Then you also know how emotionally weak she still is and how she could be harmed with any more pressure. But what I don't know is what set her off last night. And what I'm thinking might involve murder. Joanna. Mother, I have to talk to John. You are not going anywhere, and certainly not anywhere near John Reed. Don't you understand? He wants Julia. He wants to take her away from me. No, he doesn't. He wants money. Now, come on, give me your coat. No. I have to see him. If he files the papers... But he won't. That was all Terence's idea. Darling, believe me. They cannot hurt you anymore. It's all over. 
What do you mean? That's not important right now. What's important is for you to get well. Now, I want you to come upstairs and lie down. Remember, the doctor you said... You bought them off. You paid them what they wanted. Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so ashamed about everything. I was afraid you weren't going to do it. Honey, some people you never pay off. Especially people like Terence Aubrey. A leech like that, once he gets hold of you, he never lets go. You didn't pay them? No. And you won't have to either. Mother, I can't fight like you. Not in court. Yes, you can. In court, in the street, in the gutter if you have to. Did you call the police? Is that why they were here? Terence Aubrey was killed last night. The police thought I might know something about it. Killed? Yes. So you see, you won't have to worry anymore. How did he die? He deserved to die. Let's leave it at that. Yes, Joseph, what is it? Mr. Reed, madam, in the music room. Take it easy, will ya? I just came by to see my little girl. Where is she? At school, where she belongs. Why don't you go back to wherever you belong? Hey, wait a minute. She's my daughter, you know. I, I got a right to visit her. You sold all your rights. No, no, no. I don't, I don't think so. As a matter of fact, I wanted to talk to you about that because... <laughs> Hello, Joe. Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye. John. Let me handle this, Joanna. Hey, now, just wait a minute, okay? Before you blast off, okay? Now, I know, I know, I know what you're thinking, but I have nothing to do with these papers, and that is gospel. You're a bloody liar. Okay, look, okay. I sold Army some bad news, and we split the action. But, I mean, hey, look, I got, I got a need, you know? I mean, hey, Joe, you know how it is. I mean... Hey, look, as far as I'm concerned, there was nothing wrong with the old deal. I'll, I'll, I'll still keep quiet. I promise I will. The old deal is dead, and so will you be if you ever try to squeeze another penny out of us. I mean it, Reed. Now get out. Hey, baby. Hey, look, look. Hey, baby, I owe the man, baby. I mean, I mean, I can't talk to her. You can. And... Hey, look, baby, I owe the man, you know. I need help. I need help. You always will, Johnny. Do you, you want me to use these, huh? Is that what you want? Do you want me to use these? You do what you have to do. And so will I. I'm going to use these. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use them. Good afternoon, Mr. Reed. Hi, And your firm handles the legal work for Mr. Terence Aubrey, a publisher? Ah, uh, yes, the favored few. That would be Mr. Osborne. Osborne? Yes, Edmund Osborne. He's handled Mr. Aubrey's affairs for years. Well, could I talk to him, please? Well, he didn't come in today. He said he wasn't feeling well. Uh, perhaps I could no. find... No, that's okay. That's all right. Thank you very much. <laughs>
right, baby. Yeah, she's with me. She's, uh, she's having a great time, too. Johnny? He's lying. Give me the phone. Joseph, where's Julia? Reed went to the school. He told them that Julia was staying with him this weekend. Oh, no. Reed. Ah, uh, hello, Emma. I thought you weren't talking to me anymore. You bring her back here at once. No, 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 no. I don't come crawling to you anymore. You come to me. At this time, you bring a whole different attitude about what I am worth. Or maybe next time my daughter and me have a little visit, she learns a lot more about what her old man does. And she learns firsthand. You dig? I'll kill you, Reed. Hey, there's no need for that kind of talk. Man, uh, look, you know how easy I am to buy, right? So why don't you just bring some money along instead uh, and write me off for good? Say maybe a uh, <laughs> $100,000 by 5 o'clock. Joanna knows where. Otherwise, I'm sure I'm going to be seeing a lot more of my little girl than I have been lately. What is it? What is it? Just a moment. I think we'd better have a talk inside. You too. Not now, please. You don't understand. Lieutenant Stone, I would advise you to stay out of our affairs. I told We're you before. We're talk right now, either here or downtown. Madam, I think it best. Joseph, be quiet. Mother, we've got less than an hour. I'll give you five minutes. It'll take longer than five minutes, Mrs. Randolph. I want you to tell me everything you know about John Reed. Mother, tell him. He's got Julia. He wants $100,000. We have to go pick it up now and get it to him by 5 o'clock. What, he kidnapped her? No, he is her father. She wanted to go with him. She'll want to go with him again, and we can't stop her. So you were going to give him the money? We have no choice. He's an addict, and he always will be. I don't want him around my granddaughter. Not after what he did to Joanna. I don't want the same thing to happen to her. Where were you going to meet him? A park near where we used to live. Uh, McLaren Park. until his roommate got into it, and then... Who was that, last one? Yeah. He's, he's the one who drew up those papers and put, put my name on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Demanding custody of Julie on the grounds her natural mother, a heroin addict, was unfit. Yeah, listen, I had nothing to do with those papers. I mean, I didn't know nothing about them until I found him in Arby's office. Yeah, what were you doing there? Oh, come on. I mean, when I read Arby's name in the papers, I figured I'd better get my name out of his files. I mean, I, listen, I just went out of the whole scam, you know? <laughs> So they cut you out for $100,000, huh? That's right. Tell me something. How did they know they could collect without you? Oh, come on. Well, Dame, I mean, she's crazy about my kid. She'd do anything. You, you want to know who killed Arby, man? Why don't you find out where she was last night, huh? 
His alibi checks, woman's name, address, the fact he was stoned out of his skull all night. Even the neighbors could play. Hey, you see that? I'm innocent. I am innocent. Innocent. You are innocent. Yeah. Do you know what, my friend? I'm going to nail you for everything and anything you ever did. All right. Come in here. Take him downstairs. Yeah, I didn't do nothing. You're innocent. You're innocent. I'm innocent. Some more bad news? Yeah, what's that? The coroner's report verifies that Aubrey was killed with a 32 caliber automatic. Now, I checked with gun registration, and Mrs. Randolph, she owns a 32 caliber. And she could shoot the eyes out of a nap when she was 15. Huh? Nothing. Nothing. I just can't see her killing anybody. Well, Aubrey's accounted for. He's dead. Osborne was in Sacramento. Joanna was sedated, and Reed was stoned. I know, I know. And that leaves Etta Morris Randolph. That'll be all, Joseph. I'd like him to stay. I'm too tired to argue, Lieutenant. And anyway, I've learned it doesn't pay. I suppose Reed told you everything. Yes, he did. So how can I help? Mrs. Randolph, do you own a gun? Yes. May we see it, please? I haven't the slightest idea where it is. We have a search warrant, Mrs. Randolph. Then search. And we also have a warrant for your arrest. For the murder of Terence Aubrey. Lieutenant, you're making a very big mistake. Sorry, but I don't think so. You love your granddaughter very much, don't you? Of course I do. And you just heard that Terence Aubrey was going to take her away from you. No! Not from her. From me. Because of my addiction. Lieutenant, my mother couldn't have killed anyone. I know that because she was with me. Because I tried to commit suicide. Thank you, Joanna. But they know that. I don't think you could have known where your mother was at 2.30 this morning. Because a doctor had put you to sleep. Well, will you show us the gun now? No. Why not? I destroyed it. Mrs. Randolph, I suggest you call your attorney. Why? I killed Terence, and I'm proud of it. No, Maury. Shut up, Joe. Just shut up. No. She didn't kill him, Lieutenant. I did. I just couldn't stand by to watch you take your own life because of that parasite, Aubrey. I knew your mother wouldn't pay him. And she was right. But he had to be silenced. So I shot him. Joe. Oh, Joe. After all these years, why did you have to pick a time like this to start talking too much? You know the answer to that, Maury. Uh, Mr. Francis, you do know you have the right to remain silent. Thank you, Inspector. I know all that. Thank you very much. How, Joseph? Did you use his car? Lieutenant, people like me are hyper-visible. We're always there. So much so that even when we're not, people think we are. I knew he wasn't going straight home. So I knew I'd have plenty of time to greet him when he arrived. Did you mean to kill him? I don't know that, really. Perhaps I just meant to scare him. I only know that when he walked through that door and started to talk, I hated him so much, I just... That's something the district attorney will have to prove in court. And he's going to have a devil of a time doing it. They're not going to take you away from me. Not ever. They might, Mari. They might. But at least Julia's safe now. I just wanted to keep it all out of the papers. I failed you, Mari. I'm sorry. Joe, in all these years, you have never failed me in anything. Look, I... I think we should go. I'm not one for scenes. I'm sorry. For 30 years, the darn fools refused to marry me. Said it wouldn't look right. 
If you don't think I'm going to put up one whale of a fight for the man I love, you've got another thing coming. You know what I think? I think you're quite a woman. These at the front desk for you and Mike. What? Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot, Bill. Good night. Good night. Hey, what do you got? I don't know. Here. Compliments of Etta Morris Randolph. Just watch. I must have got one, too. It's got an inscription on it. Oh, man. Hi. You see my glasses anywhere? No. I can't make it out here. Will you read it for me? Yeah. To Lieutenant Michael Stone, an appreciation of 23 years of faithful service. Huh. Here, give me that. Let me see that. To Inspector Stephen Keller, an appreciation of three years of faithful service. You know what one of these jobbies costs? Yeah, I know what they cost. And they're going back. Why, this isn't a bribe. No, it's not a bribe. It's a message. What? A message. You've never seen a guy receive a gold watch, have you? In appreciation for his faithful service. What, for retirement? That's right, retirement. I'm not retiring. Yeah, I know that. I think Mrs. Etta Morris Randolph is trying to tell us something. Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars Henry Silva, Joanne Harris. The Victims. Party 
crashes. Anybody follows and he gets it. Roll it! some kind of mold. You in a mold, adventurous Nellie Bly? I don't believe it, no. No, no, no. Just a fashion page writer, boss. Oh, really? Why do men do that? Even why do they want to, you know, change it? Well, men are basically hunters, and some of them like to tame. Not you. No. No, I think molds are for cookies. Well, it can't be for me. I have no friends. Did you leave the number with someone? I had to. Oh, look at me. <laughs> I wish I could. Hello. Steve, Mike, there's been a prison break. When? About an hour ago. They took a guard with him as hostage and threw him off the truck when they hit the great highway. He's in general hospital now, pretty bad. They got that highway blocked? Both ends, all exits. I think they should put up a roadblock in US 101 South, too. They might have... Yeah, I know what they might have done. You just get your tail over to the hospital. Okay. Half an hour, right? Bye-bye. Half an hour? Prison break. Oh. Well, I'll take you. No, no, you don't have to. No, 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 no. Don't be afraid. I am much better navigator on land. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know something? What? I think they make rules for other things, too. Like what? Give me a minute. Nurse. My, my name is Mrs. Crowley. My husband was a guard. Oh, it was I'm, her. I'm sorry, Mrs. Crowley. There's no news yet. Crowley's one of our top men. He's been a guard at the prison for 14 years, but even top men get careless. Warden Hanson, my partner, Inspector Keller. Oh, Warden Inspector. These are the IDs and mug shots you wanted. Who is this? A mean one. Lee Wilson. Age 32, doing 1 to 14 on assault with intent to commit murder. John Phelan, alias Chicky, age 26, convicted of armed robbery and assault, doing 5 to 20. Well, that's his second offense. I nailed him once for burglary. And Ben Vargas, uh, age 41, embezzler, doing 1 to 10. Does he have any record of violence? Not until today. He's out of his class with those two. Well, maybe he just graduated. How many guns he got? Three shotguns and three pistols, all taken from the guards. Art, take this to communications. Teletype to all the units. You got any late news? Nope. But they're locked in. Every bridge, every artery leading out of the city is blocked. Well, how'd they make the break? I'll tell you how it happened. They jumped my husband. And then they took him hostage. Then they threw him off the truck. They were going 70 miles an hour and they threw him from the truck. Very sorry. I hope if you find those animals, you kill them. 
I want you to kill them. Come and sit down over here with us. Come on. Sit right here. Going. Well, I decided to hang around. You know, sounds like a good story. Change of pace. Hey, Steve. That woman. I mean, I know she's upset, but she didn't mean that. She means it. Believe me, she does. <sighs> That's awful. How would those men do a thing like that? I mean, what reason would they have? There was always a reason. My job would be a lot simpler. Look, you don't need this. Go back to the apartment. I'll catch up with you later, okay? Oh, Mike, they found that truck abandoned near the cliff house. Steve. Come on. You gonna go? I'm going. Steve, take care. Paper says rain. Who can wait? Got a point. Can I borrow it? Sure, I'll leave it outside. Hi. Hi. Are you uh, open for business? We'll be in a minute. Well, I'm in a kind of a hurry. Okay. Come on in. Do you have anything special in mind? Oh, we'll just kind of look around, okay? Sure. Hey, now that's a pretty time. Hmm? What do you think? Well, it's kind of, kind of too pretty. Oh, no. <laughs> you, you think it's that kind of joint? It could be. Yeah. Hey, listen. You running that kind of a store, pretty boy? Hey, well, you guys cut it out. Come on, we got to get out of here. You're so nervous. Relax. Hey. I wouldn't do that. Please. You want the whole neighborhood in here? Put that away. Maybe you're right. Okay. Give me the tie. What? what Give me you... the tie! No, oh, please. Take anything you want. Anything. I don't care what you take. Just get out. I won't say anything to anybody. I promise. I won't say a thing. I promise. That's right, pretty boy. Don't want to say anything to anybody. Lee. Look, there's the door bookkeeper. You want to go it alone? Go! Sorry I killed your weekend, buddy boy. Just shouldn't let those prisoners escape, man. So that was Connie, huh? Yeah. I'm sorry, I forgot you hadn't met. Yeah, it was no time for introductions. What was she doing down there, research? I don't know, I was sort of wondering that myself. Did she ever do a crime story? No. Strictly gourmet tips. Gourmet, huh? Yeah. I think I read some of her stuff. As a matter of fact, I did one of her recipes. Uh, it was, um... Rice and ch chicken pilaf. Oh, yeah. Came out chow mein. <laughs> No, sir. They left the shotgun, took all the handguns. 38 specials, huh? They're going to use them to find two things. Wheels and clothes. That's right. Young fellow wants a ride. How about it, Esther? Oh, sure. Looks a little bit like Johnny. <laughs> How far are you going, son? Salinas? Well, I'll take you as far as San Mateo. 
That'd be fine. Would you close the door, please? No, the door will be fine. Just drive, okay, Pop? What do you got? Mayo, white, about 21, strangled. It wasn't suicide. Somebody used a necktie and made a garret. Store owner? No, it's his folks' place. They're on vacation. He was just here for the summer. Who reported it? Phone call, anonymous. Male or female? Male. He said there were three guys in the store roughing the kid around. You sure he said three? Yeah. Any description? No, none. What about the guy that... Excuse me, one second. Be right back. Excuse me. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Keller. I'd just like to ask you a few questions. They were in here already. I said I didn't hear anything. Sorry. Well, you don't mind telling me your name, do you? Fenwick. Lewis Fenwick. Mr. Fenwick, is this your store? Thirteen years. You must have known the man that got killed. Yes. Terrible thing, what they did. I heard someone say there were three of them. You didn't see them? Mr. Fenwick, did you make the phone call? Now, look, there's nothing to be afraid of. These are escaped prisoners. They're running for their lives. Nothing to be afraid of. That's easy for you to say. Nobody's going to hurt you. Mr. Fenwick. Cops! You come in here with a gun, want people to talk, then you leave. What happens then when you're gone? Crazy people. They come back when I'm alone, like, don't... I didn't see anything. I need to know how they were dressed and which way they went. I think you can tell me that. I'm not responsible to nobody else. I'm just responsible to now me. That's too easy, and you know it. If you decide to remember anything, that's my number. Turn right here. I start pulling over there. What for? We gotta let these nice folks out now, don't we? Old man. Come on, tell the truth. Let me show you what I got in stock. Come on, folks. Lee, they didn't do anything. They don't know anything. Hey, look, they know where we are, right? You know what kind of car we got? Please, wait. Albert, let her go. I don't care what you do to me, but let her go. Hey, you know something? You really surprised me. Nice old couple like you belong together. In the graveyard! All right, this is the right forefinger of Lee Wilson. This is the right forefinger print found at the clothing store. They match. Now we got the left thumbprint of John Chicky Phelan, left thumbprint from the store. What about the prints on the third guy? He was the only guy to see clear. There's a lot you won't find in those prints, Steve. Excuse me, Connie, this is Mike Stone, Connie Moore. Connie. Hello. Say, if you're checking up on him, I'm going to swear that he's never been out of my sight. Well, you're a good man to have around. May I ask uh, what you're doing here? Well, I have been doing a little digging. For what? 
Well, for you, and possibly the city editor's desk. Now, you remember the riot at the prison last year? Yeah. All right, all three men you're looking for were very prominent in the riots. And one of them, Ben Vargas, was the spokesman for the group. Now, they demanded certain prison reforms, better food, better toilet facilities, and an end to brutality by certain prison guards. Okay, now, all these points were agreed upon. The riots ended, and nothing. No improvements, no reforms, nothing. Just a bunch of sanctimonious speeches. Now, that's what they got. So? So don't you see, that's what I was talking about, the reason. The missing element, motivation. Motivation. Now, how does motivation help us to find three killers? There are three human beings, Steve, who have been caged up like animals. Now, how can we expect them to really act differently? That is how we have treated them. Now, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. I am all for prison reform, and I'm very sorry those promises were not kept. But I don't see how that gives anybody the right to escape and kill people. Hey, I'm not condoning violence. Well, I'm very glad to hear about you that. I'm very right glad. You should. Now, listen, you have got to remember why people do the things yeah, that we're do. You cannot generalize. Oh, man, is that what you think? Yes, that's what I it looks generalize? Like. What do you mean, that's what you... Well, you're right what do you think that I'm doing what here? what it looks like. I'm trying to help you. I've you're not helping from... one bit. You... Hey, I'm just giving you... What is it? Well, it's uh, something that maybe Connie ought to see before she uh, puts that story on the city editor's desk. Well, you've got it. gallery like this. 38 caliber. Found these shells. 18 of them so far. That's it. Any ID? No. Well, the pockets were stripped. Well, we better get a workup. Ballistics, fingerprints, x-rays, dental chart, the works. Facial photos, too, front and profile. Check up against passport and possible credit IDs. Right. Hey, are you all right? I shouldn't have brought you here. Is that why you're sorry? Because I'm here? Oh, Connie. No, wait a minute. You see this every day. Fine. But can you really just accept it like that? I mean, don't you feel anything? Is that what being a cop's all about? This isn't the time, Connie. Well, wait a second. You just said that man's basic instinct is to be a hunter, right? Right. Is that all that's on your mind right now? Just get back to the hunt. Never mind about the victim. They're just a piece of evidence now, something that leads you on the track of the animal that you're hunting. And never mind the fact that what you're hunting is a human being. Sick, maybe, but a human being, Steve. What does that cost you? I mean, what do you have to be to do that? I really don't understand. I just don't understand. I don't understand it. All right, could you take the lady home? She's not feeling very well. Guess I had a bad idea. Okay, huh? okay. Anything else? No, no. I'm talking about those two people back there. This is a real kill-crazy spree, buddy boy. I've only seen a couple like it in my 27 years on the force. As far as I'm concerned, it's... Hey, look out! Sorry. You want me to drive? No, no. You're sure? Yeah.
now suspect that an elderly couple murdered in an auto dumping ground this morning may be the latest victims of the fugitives, bringing to four the number of victims in their wake. A description of the three convicts released by police department officials is as follows. Lee Wilson, age 32. Come on, man. They're just getting ready to talk about us. I got news for you, kid. You're not a celebrity. You're a target. Hey. Hey, how about that house over there, Lee? You see the bike? Now, you think it got there by itself? Over there. Empty garage. Yeah. We'll park around the corner. Wilson has a sister in Vegas and a brother in Lansing, Michigan. All right. Ask the local police for help on both of these. John Chicky Phelan, no known relatives, but a lot of jobs in San Francisco. Pin boy, locker room attendant, concessionaire, San Francisco Zoo, half a dozen of them. Joel, hit the pavement on these, will you? See if you can find out anybody who knows where he's holed up. But what about uh, Vargas? What about him? That's my phone. I'll be right back. Keller? Ben Vargas, former bookkeeper. Northwest Lumber Supply lived with a Margarita Alvarez. Avenida Del Mar, Tijuana, for eight months after embezzling funds. Okay, give it to me. Bill, call the Mexican authorities. Find out what you can about this, will you? Do you want her watched? Well, if they find the girl, have them keep a lookout for Vargas, will you? Okay. Settled for a second degree. Disappointed in that? Or are you disappointed because it wasn't a call from Connie? I think I'll go down the record and see if they got anything on that old couple. Somebody's having a party. Check it out upstairs. Rip out the phones. If you see any guns, bring them down. Shortwave radio gear. A cop's house? They got him in cars, not at home. Listen. Get over there. Well, the 
mantle. Now put your hands on it. Do it as she gets it. She now? She's spending the night with her grandmother. We wanted to get it set up without her knowing. Fifty-two bucks. You got any more money in the house? And no, just that. Nothing upstairs? No box of dimes, quarter? Jewelry? Jewelry? You must have some jewelry. Nice looking mama like you. I bet you look like a million bucks when you're all decked out. Come on, Mama. Show me where you keep it. I'll get it. Hey! Stay out of it! Come on, Mama. Show me where you keep it. You're looking good. Relax. Hey, Ben. I would tell you about the little honey I took, uh... In the tool shed at the zoo? It was right next to the giraffe cages. Shut up! Hill, come here! Hey, nice setup you got. I was a sparks myself in the Navy. I ran a radio room on a tin can off South Korea. Now you listen. And you listen good. Those guys are crazy. Hospital crazy, you know what I mean? They just killed four people, mister. Just play it straight, and you and your woman will be lucky to get out alive. Start anything, you'll both be dead. I think we ought to put three more units here on the south side. It's an awful large area to cover. I got you. Listen, I got a positive ID on that old couple, Mr. and Mrs. Albert Lockwood, 210 Sutter Street, San Mateo. Play this on DMV. Find out the kind of car they own and the license number. I beg your pardon. Oh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Fenwick, right? I heard on the radio about that couple at the auto graveyard. It's my fault. I should have told you I did see those men. I saw what they were wearing. Bill. This is Inspector Tanner. He'll take the information. You've got to get him. Yes, sir. Before they kill anybody else, you've got to. Looks like you finally got to him after all. Just a little late for the victims, that's all. Oh, he's a victim too, buddy boy. Maybe the worst kind. He's going to have to live with it for the rest of his life. Attention all units. North Point and the Embarcadero is a 1032. Mistaken identity. Info from Central 4. I'll kill you, Harry! I'll kill you! Go! You want some phone? And you shut your mouth. Hello? Hello, Betty. This is Jane. Good news. I got a sitter for the baby today after all. So I'll bring Sharon over for the party at 3 o'clock. Okay? Okay. Anything I can bring? No. Okay, gotta run. See you at three. Bye. Hey, you're cute. You know that? You're real. You're really cute. Now, the party was supposed to be tomorrow. Now, what were you thinking? The people will come in, they'll see us, they'll call the cops. I want us to call them. They'll be here soon enough by themselves. You hear the radio? Cops got a description out on the old man's car. It's bound to be spotted. We gotta move. Lee, the camper's parked outside. We can take it. That's a good idea. I'll take you as insurance. Now, you try to follow. Or call the cops. She's dead. Hey, that was a very good hit. Give me the key.
Thanks. Steve. Yeah. Confirmation from the Mexican police. They got a stakeout on that Alvarez woman. Good. Oh, Mike. This is Mr. Thompson. I think you'd better talk to him. He says that... They've got my wife. They... Now, who's got your wife? Three men with guns. They broke into our house. They attacked her. Took her away in our car. They... What kind of car? A camper, red. I didn't know if I should call or not. They could kill her. License number? Uh, six... Six, four, four, three, eight, M. All right, Bill, you want to put that on the horn? Don't say I told you. Please, they'll kill her. I had to trust you. Put that they on can't the police radio only. No right. media yet. Oh, uh, take Mr. Thompson into my room where it's quiet, Mr. Thompson. And you tell him everything that happened. Annie? I guess Steve's pretty busy, huh? Yeah, very. Well, I thought we should, uh, have a talk. Well, I guess there's not much point in that either. Mike, would you give these to Steve for me? I won't be needing them. Thanks. Connie. You see that man in there with Steve? Yes. Well, his wife is with those three men that you're so concerned about. She's already been attacked by them, and now they're holding her as hostage. Mike, I don't need any more of your shock treatments. Oh, now, wait a minute. I, I didn't ask you to come along just to shock you. Oh. No. I have to know how Steve feels about you, and I just wanted you to see exactly what he has to deal with before... Well, before you press that argument with him any further, that's all. All right. I've seen what he does and how he does it. No, you didn't. You didn't see anything. How would you want him to do his job? Oh, he's a professional. He can't work with tears in his eyes when he's looking at a corpse. He can't carry the guilty conscience of the world on his shoulders when he's running after a killer, can he? Mike, I think this is strictly between Steve and me. Not when other people's lives depend on it. And they depend on it as long as he's carrying that badge, Connie. You take him or leave him. But don't put a monkey wrench in his head. Don't make him less than he is. And don't get him killed. on the next corner. Bruder and Lily down about a quart. Okay, just hurry it up. Kenny? What's up? Don't look now, but you see the guys in the camper? Mm -hmm. Well, they fit the cons we heard about on the radio. I said, don't look. One's in the men's room, the other's probably in back. We'll tell the other guys and call the cops. Listen, call the cops. The ex-cons you heard about on the radio, they're here in the camper. Oh, 
Okay, okay, that's enough. How much? Hey, mister, I can't rush it. I said, how much? Okay. Come on, move it! Be eight dollars and 29 cents. Here, keep the change. I'll just blow the hood. Hey, what's going on up there? Benny went into the bathroom. He's washing his 12 hands. He gives me a pain right inside my head. Hey, what's going on here? Just come out of there, mister. Come on now, step back, all of you. Step back, oh. get back, way back, way back. Vargas, Vargas, where'd they go? Don't hit me. Nobody's gonna hurt you anymore. Now listen, they left you here. Can you hear me? They left you here. You don't owe them anything. Vargas, don't pass out on me, Vargas. Where'd they go? Uh, zoo. Uh, zoo. Zoo. Let's get an ambulance. Doug Thompson. Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, listen, Larry, I'm taking my family camping up in Mendocino later today. I wonder... Well, you mentioned once you'd let me take that target pistol of yours out sometime and give it a try. Would it be all right if I picked it up now? Harry, take a detail to the south fence. Where's Tanner? To the aviary. We'll have him go around the west. Tell him to watch out for kids. All right, Bill, this is Steve. Move over with Art to the west side, will you? But look out for the kids. You got that? Check, Steve. All right, take another man, will you? Right straight through. Mike? Yeah. Thompson. Maybe he knows something he didn't tell us. How do you know that? Something one of them said, I remember. Let me go. Well, something you forgot, too, because I told you we'd get your wife back if you did it our way. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, come on. All right, this is Keller. There's a tool shed at the southeast corner up behind the giraffes. All units converge.
Best sharpshooter. Okay. It's being done. It's being done. He's gonna die. All over, Mr. Thompson. It's all over. For you, him, and your family. Unless you pull that trigger. Then you go where he's going, and your wife, she tries to tell your daughter why. Is that what you want? God, don't! Please! I, I can live with it if you can. But if you can't... You know, I'm all alone! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Somebody asked me why. You want to tell me? Yeah. Sure. All right, now get him out of here. It really makes you wonder, doesn't it? Time to ask was a long time ago. Why, well, you think he might have turned out different? Like you said, you wonder. But you never know. feeling for both of us. Uh-oh. Look who's there. Yeah. Oh, say, I forgot. Yeah, she couldn't get in. Did you talk to her? Yeah, we had a few words. You had a few words. Lieutenant, you mind giving me all the information before Inspectors I... Inspectors 8 one Inspectors 8-1. We have a possible homicide at 917 Bay Street. Will you respond? No. Please. No, she's not going to believe this. Well, she's not going to hear about it. Oh, come on. There's no way I can get well, out of here. Wait a minute. I'm the lieutenant, right? Right. Why did I want to become lieutenant? So I could give the orders, right? Right. So please, let me start this case on my own, will you, please? And another thing. You got a bottle of wine in the fridge? Yeah. Take it out and put the telephone in there. That way, if I call, I can always say nobody answered. Inspectors 8-1 to headquarters. On that 917 Bay Street call, we'll respond. Mm -hmm. 
lovely surprise.